Good morning, folks. Today we've got a mid-level solar storm ongoing. We'll see heart math in the news today, as well as deeper dives on the internal Earth skeleton, and looking back to confirm the last major events in the 12,000-year cycle and half-cycle. Starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, we find the last day was quiet up there on the sun, but that's not the case back here at Earth. With the coronal holes turning through, let's go to the solar wind and see the shock-driven impact in the model that came at the leading edge of the coronal hole solar wind stream. Clear signature as the density rose first with the shock followed by the onset of the hotter, faster plasma stream. We have been in geomagnetic storm conditions since the speed ramped up following that initial density impact. KP6 is a level 2 storm, level 2 out of 5, and we should be monitoring large-scale systems for glitches, outages, electrical fires, etc. The geoelectric surge was fairly impressive given the solar wind speed really wasn't so speedy. I wouldn't have quite expected this level of returns on the model, only about 50 times less than what would have caused major grid troubles at the city and perhaps regional scale. Let's head over to the heart, consciousness, and Earth's magnetic field. With heart math on this one, those who know their brand know this will be an observer-friendly paper. The correlations have been laid out over the last few years and now the deeper side of things, where the unknown meets modern science, is explored here. Folks, we've spent more than two years detailing the evidence of the recurring disaster on Earth, the magnetic change, the ice or flood events, the volcanoes, and the extinctions, especially since we are due in time and seeing every sign it's happening again now. But over the last 28,000 years, there are only two of the main excursion events and the half events between them. Weather-wise, those first three were ice events and the very last one, 6,000 years ago, a flood event due to the warmth of the mid-Holocene. Today, we find yet another way to spot those critical events, the last glacial maximum immediately following the Lake Mungo event, Helena Poly right before Heinrich Event 1, and the Younger Dryas matching up with the Gothenburg magnetic excursion. As I said, it was a warmer flood event 6,000 years ago as well and the bumpy ride is beginning again now. Speaking of bumpy, the Earth geoid, an irregular shaped ball worked by mass, gravity, the magnetic field, wind, oceans, and the mantle, and apparently the large low shear velocity provinces, the LLSVPs, the huge internal skeletal structures of Earth. Here, they are identifying the geoid density anomalies and finding their association with that large scale skeleton. Folks, they still teach a homogeneous, concentric shell structure of Earth in school, but it's just not so. The density, chemistry, and conductivity tell us this is indeed like the skeleton of the Earth, especially since its reach into the upper mantle is confirmed again here. And so, how does Atlantis sink? How did the Bolivian port city get launched a mile high and abandoned 11,000 years ago? How does the crust behave when the internal structure of the planet is affected by the magnetic excursion and great cyclical solar blast induction? Two words, mantle heaving. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.